Hi, and welcome back to U Regina 120. I'm Jeff Clint. Uh, and sorry about the uh, last video. Uh, it was kind of cut off at the end, but uh, I was pretty much wrapped up anyway. So hopefully that's okay with you guys. Uh, again, this is a video series of 120 things that I learned in my university uh, years uh, towards my degree of uh, computer science at the University of Virginia. And today we're going to talk about different approaches. Uh, so what do I mean by different approaches? So what we want to do whenever we are uh, either doing homework or even if there's time for it during a final exam or a, a midterm, uh, if you ever are given a problem and you aren't completely stuck for time, you should go and see if you know how to derive the answer to the problem in a different way than the one that you is usually obvious um, in the current context that it's given. Uh, sometimes you can get away with this. Uh, again, I haven't gotten into a lot of the other ideas uh, that I was taught, so it's hard to give too many examples of this. Uh, but it is especially true when dealing with uh, circuit design and uh, program logic design. So if you have a, a value that you need to compute using very simple primitives uh, that you can, instead of using one kind of primitive, you can also use other kinds of primitives and see if you can derive the same result. See if you can de derive the same answer, the same number, the same value, the same equation, even, the same s uh, set of equations, the same uh, result. The, the more ways you can approach a problem, the more likely that the answer that you have will be correct, the more likely that you understand what it is that you're doing, the more likely it is that the approach that you are trying isn't biased against you in some way that is going to lead you astray. If you can come up with multiple ways of acquiring the same information, you can verify that information against each other and verify that the ways that you use to get that information are valid. So, for example, if you use geometry to 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 derive some figure to the, to make some proof of some relationship, if you can use algebra to do the same thing uh, using the, a different approach, you can be more sure of your result than if you had just used geometry alone. Of course, from the last video, you know that if you create or you uh, kind of walk through some. Uh, problem, you have an answer, then your answer may be good, assuming you did everything correctly in order to achieve it. So this is kind of a caveat on the previous video in that the way that you approach any given problem may be flawed. You're a human being, human beings are flawed, your approach to any problem may as well be flawed. But the more ways you can approach a single problem, the less likely that the individual ways that you approach that problem are leading you astray. And sometimes it's the only way to be sure that you know something. So there are, there are many things out there that the leading minds in the world have only figured one way of approaching a problem, or one way of calculating a value, or one way of measuring a value. And there is no way to really double check whether or not they have it right. These are the things that it may be worth looking to see if you can find another way to derive it. Uh, some of these other ways of deriving it may be trivial, some of them won't be, but it's just an example of something that you can look for, uh, a way to make problems that are difficult maybe easier, or in other cases, take easy problems and make them difficult in a kind of measurable way, so that as you make your problem more difficult, you're increasing your understanding of other problems, you're increasing your understanding of your approaches, of your tools that you're using to understand the world. So, um, specific examples. NAND is how most circuits are uh, created these days. Unless something changed fairly recently. Um, the NAND gate, it is a very sim simple gate uh, that most electronics is implemented, or at least a lot of electronics is implemented. However, you can derive anything made with a NAND gate using NAND.
and or and not, or more likely, and and not. I don't want to get into the details of how or why, but this is just one way of viewing the world in a different way so that your approaches may be different uh, for solving logic problems. Um, so hopefully that is something useful to you, and uh, we'll uh, try to get into more details as we give you more tools for understanding different problems. Thanks for watching.